Wow, did you hear the news? The CEO of the new Fiat Chrysler combination put his offices on the fourth floor instead of the 15th floor where Nardelli used to keep his offices. Now the fourth floor is where the engineering, where the design, where the new products are developed. Now by moving to the fourth floor, Marcioni has a different perspective. He's right outside. He's able to see what's, of what's going on in the organization. Now I can't say that I completely agree with all the things that have happened, the shenanigans that have gone on. I don't believe we should have thrown out all the bankruptcy laws in order to make this thing happen. I don't think we should have had politics involved in building business. But the fact is, the CEO, the executives, are now making smart decisions that might be able to possibly secure the future of the Chrysler-Fiat combination. By the way, I think the name should have been Fiat. But let's go on with the CEO. By moving his offices down to the fourth floor, he's made a broad statement. He's made a statement that he's going to look, be involved in what's going on in the future of the organization, especially in the new product development area. And he needs to. The 2010 Jeep is behind schedule. Some say it won't come out to near 2011, and that could be devastating for the organization. The product needs to come out, and the product needs to come out fast. But think about it. What's just happened is exactly what shouldn't happen. The organization had their back up against the wall, and the executives stood in their suites. What they should have done is gone down and participated. The Italians know this. They haven't put any money into the organization. They've only given technology. And if things go wrong, they could always say, ah, it was bad, but they didn't lose much. But there's a reputation to be had. And by moving offices downstairs, a few things are now going to happen. The executive team is going to be able to see what's going on every day. Now, that's a good thing and a bad thing. If you see what's going on every day and you can add input without pushing your weight around too much, that's a great thing. The trouble is often CEOs get their nose in things and the research goes out, they find out that the people like the color red and the CEO wants the color blue. So what do they produce? They produce blue. In my programs on new product and service development, you probably learned that. But the CEO interference could be good and bad depending on how it's handled. The second thing is, it now looks like the executive team is part of the team. By moving his offices downstairs, he's changed the dynamics. The organization is not going to see him as an outsider, but someone who's willing to participate, roll up his sleeves, get involved. And that's a good thing. It changes morale and changes perspective. Besides, his experience as the CEO of Fiat is going to be able to help them ride through some of the challenges they're going to face in developing a six-cylinder product in a rapid time frame. See, if they have it, this vehicle, this Jeep, come out in 2011, it's going to look like a disaster. Besides that, there's a lot of money at stake. So by moving the product development team downstairs, the CEOs, the executives who make the decisions, they're going to be able to rapidly make decisions and impact how quickly this product can come off the line. Number three, there's a mistake often that we find executives making. They wait too long. I was once told by a, asked by a European, why do Americans in their football games wait to the last minute before they put the push on? Well, if you think about it, in a lot of sports, it's the last few minutes where they really try to put the pressure on, especially when they're tight. Well, in this situation, everything's been tight for quite some time, and there really hasn't been that urgency to move on. The union hasn't felt it was their prerogative to make sure things happen quickly, and management didn't do the same. But both of them are to blame. But in this case, again, I think that the CEO's move is going to make some huge differences. Reminds me of a book that I read called The Silver Lake Project. I, I think it was a great book. Uh, I think you can still get it on Amazon as a used book. It's several decades old. And it tells the story of IBM. IBM used to have a facility outside of Rochester, Minnesota. It was about 15, 16 football fields large. It built a computer system called the system, I believe it was 24, could be 26. Don't remember the exact number. But it was a computer system that the engineers and the team thought in this facility that they were the greatest developers and nothing would stop them. But at one point, the customers revolted and they were about to go under, or this unit was about to go under. So IBM took a bold move and sent a new CEO in. The CEO did exactly what Maccioni's doing. He brought the team side together. He spoke with everybody. He became involved in the new product and service development process. He created parallel processing and developing computer components. He got his VAR channel involved in the types of products and services that the organization or the customers were looking for. I won't give you the long drawn out story, that would be for another video. 
But what I'm going to tell you this is, when the product eventually came off the line, the AS400, which what is the name today, still the AS400 decades later, was the most successful launch in product history at the time. A product that was selling anywhere from tens of thousands of dollars to hundreds of thousands of dollars. They sold 55,000 units the first day of launch. It was the most successful product launch in history. Customers loved it. And if Rochester, Minnesota was not a part of the IBM family, it would have been the second largest computer company in the world. I think that's pretty impressive. In this case, I think that the switch, by moving down to the fourth floor, is going to send signals all around the globe that Fiat and Chrysler are at least going to give it the final push to see if they can pull themselves out of this. Their debt's been wiped away due to politics. There's a new management structure in place, a new union contract where they can't strike until 2015. And I think that everybody knows that there's not many more options left. So my hat's off to you, CEO, for making the move. I think it was brilliant.